Hello, in this video I'm going to discuss the stretch shorten cycle. So the stretch shorten cycle is the effect that occurs when an active muscle is stretched to generate an eccentric muscle contraction immediately before the action is reversed to generate a concentric muscle contraction. Okay, so it's any time we have a lengthening of the muscle immediately before that action reverses and then we have a shortening of the muscle. So an eccentric contraction immediately before a concentric contraction. Uh, now importantly, this is an active lengthening, not like a passive stretching. Um, so it means that the muscle is eccentrically contracting, it is not passively stretching. Okay, so the eccentric tension that develops first enhances the concentric contraction that follows. Okay, so first you have the eccentric contraction, which like we talked about in another video, um, we're able to generate a greater amount of tension or a greater amount of force during the eccentric contraction. So we develop that tension in, during the eccentric contraction and then immediately reverse into a concentric contraction of that same muscle. And so that first eccentric contraction enhances the amount of force and the strength of that muscle during the concentric contraction. Um, so we maximize and take advantage of the stretch shorten cycle in activities like jumping, running, and throwing, um, where we first have an eccentric action that immediately precedes the concentric action that follows. So anytime we have like a wind up before we have the concentric action, um, that is taking advantage of the stretch shorten cycle. Um, so we don't totally understand, and I say we like we, the, <laughs> the field of biomechanics, um, there isn't in general a thorough understanding of why the stretch shorten cycle happens or how it exactly works. Um, but there are a lot of ideas that are likely part of the picture. Um, so uh, when a muscle tendon unit is stretched right before contraction, so in the eccentric contraction right before the concentric, the tendon recoils and shortens faster than the muscle. Okay, so our muscle tendon unit is elastic, um, meaning that it has the ability to stretch and then recoil and return back to its original shape. So when we stretch it, and especially the tendon, and then we let go of that stretch, it will recoil just like a rubber band, like if I slingshotted a rubber band across the room, it has the same sort of effect. Um, so it could be that um, when we're stretching the tendon as the muscles going into that eccentric contraction and then we reverse and go into the concentric, the tendon is recoiling faster than the muscle. Um, so it has sort of an elastic recoiling effect. Uh, that also means that the muscle during the concentric contraction won't be quite as affected by the force velocity relationship um, because that tendon recoiling is recoiling fast enough that the muscle doesn't need to contract as fast, doesn't need to shorten as fast for the, the whole muscle tendon unit to shorten. Okay, so because the tendon was stretched, it is quickly rebounding and that takes up some of the slack from the muscle so that the muscle has the chance to contract a little bit more slowly. And the more slowly the muscle contracts, the more cross bridges it can form and the more force it can produce. So although this is a compelling explanation, uh, it doesn't account for all of the effects that we observe from the stretch shorten cycle. So although what I just described here is likely part of the picture and is likely part of the effects of the stretch shorten cycle, when we account for that experimentally, there's still a greater effect than what we can explain just with that explanation. So there are more ideas that also might be part of this. Um, it could also have to do with the activation of muscle spindle cells that are stimulated when the muscle stretches during the eccentric contraction. Um, so we'll talk about muscle spindle cells in another uh, video, uh, but in short here, it's a, one of our types of proprioceptors, which are sensory receptors that help give the brain a sense of where we are in space and how the muscles and joints are moving and 
Um, muscle spindle cells specifically are a type of proprioceptor. Um, they're a specialized type of um, muscle fiber that have uh, sensory properties that they're able to detect the amount of stretch of the muscle fibers. So they detect the amount of stretch and how fast the muscle is being stretched. So the velocity of that stretch and the amount of stretch. So they're detecting that sensory information from the muscle and sending it back to the central nervous system so that the brain can factor in the amount of stretch into its picture of where we are in space. Um, but when we stretch the muscle, and especially when we stretch it with higher velocity, we stretch it faster, um, that will trigger a reflex that is generated by the muscle spindle cells that will cause the muscle to contract to protect against the stretch in the muscle. So if the muscle is stretching a lot or too fast, that could cause an injury. We could tear the muscle, we could injure the tendon, so we could have an injury. So to protect against that injury, the muscle spindle cells will be activated and will trigger a reflex that causes that same muscle to contract to resist the, the stretch that's happening in the muscle. So it's possible that in the case of the stretch shorten cycle, that because we're stretching the muscle as part of the eccentric contraction, that we might also be causing that reflex to take place so that it shortens in response um, and produces a greater contraction when we go from the eccentric into the concentric part of the movement. Uh, it's also been proposed that um, not all muscle fibers are at their optimal length when they're at rest and that the eccentric contraction during a stretch shortened cycle might actually stretch the fibers and put the sarcomeres in their most optimal position so that they're able to produce the greatest amount of force when you shift into the concentric contraction. So if you think about the length tension relationship, that's where that comes in here. Um, and so it's, it's possible that like at rest, our muscles are, or the sarcomeres might be a little bit more shortened than what is optimal for optimal force production. But if we go into an eccentric contraction first, we're in a more optimal or more favorable position that allows us to have greater force production in the concentric contraction. So what is really the explanation here? Probably some blend of everything I've explained. Um, and maybe there are other factors that we haven't discovered yet um, because it's just not, not a well understood topic. Uh, plyometric exercises are like what I mentioned earlier, where there are certain activities that take advantage of the stretch shorten cycle. Um, and we refer to those as plyometric. Um, so it's any exercise or any kind of movement or activity that includes concentric contractions that are immediately preceded by eccentric contractions so that they're taking advantage of the stretch shorten cycle and all of the additional force that's a, that we're able to produce um, as a result. So it's anything that has some like bouncing or hopping sort of effects so like running, jumping, skipping, those are all examples. Um, so walking is not plyometric. We don't have the same kind of bounce that we have as in running. Um, in this picture, this is an, a plyometric push-up where you're going down into the push-up and that's the eccentric contraction and without any pause or break, you go down and then pop up and push off of the ground. Uh, that's a plyometric push-up. Um, but what's important is that you go down and up immediately and that's how you capitalize on the stretch shorten cycle. Um, so if you try this yourself, you'll find that you get a lot more uh, force production and you're able to be more successful trying to push off the ground if you go down and up right away as opposed to if you went down and held it for a moment and then pushed up you would lose that stretch shorten cycle effect by having that pause so what gives us that effect is the eccentric and then immediately shifting into the concentric without any break in between so it's the movement into the eccentric there's no isometric hold and then immediately into the concentric. And that's where we get the stretch shorten cycle effects. Um, so any break in between and we lost that effect. 
Uh, so it maximizes the effects of the stretch shortened cycle to improve force production and metabolic efficiency. And that is especially true during locomotion. Uh, so we become more efficient when we go into like a running or skipping gait compared to walking. Uh, because in running or skipping, we're taking advantage of the stretch shortened cycle, whereas in walking, we are not. Okay, so that is all I have in this lecture. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next one.